Hi guys, welcome to the instructional video for DENT, the Destructible Environment Network Toolkit for Unreal Engine 4. In this video I'm just going to take you very briefly on how to create a destructible mesh. Ok, so let's begin. I've got the starter content here. What we're going to do is we're just going to find a nice little um, model. Just filter by static mesh and we can get something here. Okay, once you've got your model, it's small rock looks pretty cool. So right click, create destructible mesh. The mesh has been created. Now here there's some parameters we'll need to set. So we'll just go through them quite quickly with you. Damage threshold. This is how much damage has to be applied at any specific point to break away some debris or a chunk. Now damage spread is how far this damage is going to, to spread across the chunk. Is it going to affect multiple chunks, single chunks? So it gives you a more sort of localized uh, feel or a much more global feel on the explosion. Personally, I like to keep it 0 0.1, 0 0.2 for your um, bullets and missiles. It works quite well. Debris life span. Basically, this is all the little bits, the crumbles, the chunks, everything that, that makes it look absolutely amazing but will also kill your game. So what you're going to have to do is make sure these numbers are between 1 and 10. Um, if you start to get performance issues you're going to have to drop these down because too much debris will kill your game. Uh, now these are the, this, this next section is very important. What we've got here is we need to, we want to have generally accumulate damage, debris timeout, world support, and form extended structures. These are the four main ones that you're going to want to have. Okay, so since it's a big rock we don't really need to have it forming an extended structure but we can do anyway if we want to overlay other rocks onto it to give a nice feel uh, or attach things to the side of it. Debris timeout. This uh, flag activates the settings we have up in the debris section here just ensuring we don't uh, freeze our game world support. Now that's going to be exactly the same as form extended structures but instead of being other meshes that it connects to, it's to the actual environment. So if it's on the floor, it's going to use the floor as an actual support so it's not just going to topple when it's uh, when it's hot. Accumulate damage. This means that if we set the damage threshold at say 250, it means 250 points of damage would have to be applied at any specific area to break off a chunk. Um, if it's ticked, it'll accumulate up, so 10, 50, 100, 250, boom, chunk falls off. If it's unticked, the damage is instantly forgotten and it'll, it will require an impact above that point for any damage to be done. Now, support depth. This increases the computational load of the, the chunk. So the higher the support um, depths go, the, the more more requirement there is for your computer to, uh, to work hard. Um, it's a rock, it doesn't really require that much uh, support. Generally I just like to keep all of these at one and if you get any performance issues, drop it down and play with it from there. Also again, enable debris is linked to the debris uh, that we spoke about here for the, the timeout, debris um, max life. And if we have this, it just enables the, the level of detail to remove them when they're required so it doesn't overpower your computer. Last thing is the cell size. Cell size is how many chunks you're going to get from this. So the bigger you want it, the bigger the chunks, the, um, the smaller, the, the bigger that's going to be. If you want loads of chunks, loads of little tiny chunks, by bringing this number up. If you have this at four five hundred, it will be quite a, a big load for the computer to deal with and it will take a long time for it to render them as well. So we'll just stick this up to 50. And fracture mesh. Okay, we just check this. There we go. Nice fractured mesh. You'll see that we've been given another material assigned to this. So this is the internal material. Uh, it's assigned to the world material grid here. You'll see this the cobbles. So what we'll do is we'll just get M rock and we'll apply it in there. And that means it looks nice. It's filled up the inside quite well. Yeah, that looks like rocks. So we save that. 
and we'll just drag this into the game. Okay. The chunks are coming off that now. Okay, so the destructible mesh is, is functioning as we would expect it to function. And the debris is disappearing. Okay, this works fine for one player. Um, but for multiplayer, this isn't going to work. This is going to cause you problems. So in the next tutorial, we'll go into how Dent enables you to, to bring this to the next level and to, to use this on a multiplayer, um, multiplayer game. Okay, thanks for listening, guys. Speak to you next time. Thanks for listening, guys. See you next time.